This is section 10 of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax, section 10, the character of a trimmer, the preface, read by John Greenman. It must be more than ordinary provocation that can tempt a man to write in an age overrun with scribners, as Egypt was with flies and locusts. That worst vermin of small authors hath given the world such a surfeit, that instead of desiring to write, a man would be more inclined to wish, for his own ease, that he could not read but there are some things which do so raise our passions that our reason can make no resistance and when madmen in two extremes shall agree to make common sense treason and join to fix an ill character upon the only men in the nation who deserve a good one i am no longer master of my better resolution to let the world alone and must break loose from my more reasonable thoughts to expose these false coiners, who would make their copper wares pass upon us for good payment. Amongst all the engines of dissension there hath been none more powerful in all times than the fixing names upon one another of contumely and reproach, and the reason is plain in respect of the people, who, though generally they are uncapable of making a syllogism, or forming an argument, yet they can pronounce a word, and that serveth their turn to throw it with their dull malice at the head of those they do not like. Such things ever begin in jest, and end in blood, and the same word which at first maketh the company merry, groweth in time to a military signal to cut one another's throats these mistakes are to be lamented though not easily cured being suitable enough to the corrupted nature of mankind but tis hard that men will not only invent ill names but they will rest and misinterpret good ones so afraid some are even of a reconciling sound that they raise another noise to keep it from being heard lest it should set up and encourage a dangerous sort of men who prefer peace and agreement before violence and confusion. Were it not for this, why, after we have played the fool with throwing Whig and Tory at one another, as boys do snowballs, do we grow angry at a new name, which by its true signification might do as much to put us into our wits as the other hath done to put us out of them. This innocent word trimmer signifieth no more than this, that if men are together in a boat, and one part of the company would weigh it down on one side, another would make it lean as much to the contrary. It happeneth there is a third opinion of those who conceive it could do as well if the boat went even without endangering the passengers now tis hard to imagine by what figure in language or by what rule in sense this cometh to be a fault and it is much more a wonder it should be thought a heresy but so it happeneth that the poor trimmer hath now all the powder spent upon him alone while the wig is a forgotten or at least a neglected enemy there is no danger now to the state if some men may be believed but from the beast called a trimmer take heed of him he is the instrument that must destroy church and state a strange kind of monster whose deformity is so exposed that were it a true picture that is made of him it would be enough to fright children and make women miscarry at the sight of it but it may be worth examining whether he is such a beast as he is painted. I am not of that opinion, and am so far from thinking him an infidel, either in church or state, that I am neither afraid to expose the articles of his faith in relation to government, nor to say that I prefer them before any other political creed, 
that either our angry divines or our refined statesmen would impose upon us i have therefore in the following discourse endeavored to explain the trimmer's principles and opinions and then leave it to all discerning and impartial judges whether he can with justice be so arraigned and whether those who deliberately pervert a good name do not very justly deserve the worst that can be put upon themselves end of the character of a trimmer the preface read by john greenman